Hi, it's Yolanda with Yolanda Experience Tibet, and I am here on the Tibet train somewhere between uh, Siling and Lhasa. Uh, and I wanted to just give some lessons learned. I've got a number of them, and I'm just going to like pop through them and uh, to give you guys an idea of uh, some of the things that are useful to know about the train. This is the second time I've taken the train. The first time was in August. The second time is uh, now. This is December 1st. So August or uh, maybe it was September. Definite high season. The train was packed to high heaven. And um, this time it is empty. Um, I'll just give you a quick. I'm in a soft sleeper. Hopefully you can see this. And there is nobody here. When I first got on, there were, I think, two guys to these guys. In August, um, this hallway is packed. And I don't know if you can tell, but if you put one of these seats down, it's there's no room. So, I mean, th it, it was just wall-to-wall -wall people in August. And right now, you can just walk around, stand up, do what you like. It's freaking awesome. I actually think I have the whole car to myself. I don't think there's anybody not just this compartment, but I don't think that the people on the train, by the way, got off in Goldmud, I think. So I don't think there's anybody in this whole car, um, which is just fantastic. It's, you know, I'm loving it. But if you, um, you know, if you're a couple travelers, it's just sweet. Just so much more space. It was super, super, super packed in August. So one lesson learned is if you like a lot of people, go in the high season. If you just want a lot of space and, um, freedom then you know definitely this was low season by the way another thing is I was a little worried about that, that I might need a sleeping bag or something there's actually plenty of um, warmth you see this is a pillow plus a, a comforter and last night I was actually hot so and, and there's a heater right here and it's working so this heater sorry this heater is working and it was really quite hot um, so, okay, another lesson learned. So the lesson learned for me, and certainly I didn't need one in, um, in August, September, the last time. So you don't really need a sleeping bag for the train, if you think that you might. One thing you do need for the train is, I recommend you bring your own food. The food, I haven't had the food in the kitchen. It looked not good. They do come around with a little cart. So just kind of snacks, like dried snack and stuff. But I just, I'm, I just brought a bag of stuff. One thing that you do have is, they don't have water, so I brought my own water. But they have these um, thermoses, and then they have hot water uh, dispensers in the hall, so you can go get your own hot water. And I, you know, I have some ramen, and then I have a little one of these things. It's freaking awesome. I got, I got one of these things in um, the ceiling, and you just. Um, and it keeps it hot or cold for a really long time, like almost like 12 or 14 hours or something crazy. So just got a little coffee in there, good to go. Another lesson learned is, big one, there is no room in these compartments for bags. No room. So there's a little bit of space underneath. I guess if you had a very narrow bag you could fit. I have a bag that you would put on the in the um, uh, overhead compartment in a plane it fits easily and every plane that I've been on it doesn't fit under the seat and then I will just share with you up here hopefully you can see that that's the bag that's a that's a, a carry-on bag for a plane so if there are four people in here with bags it doesn't work the last time I was here I had a big duffel and it didn't uh, we couldn't uh, my friend Meg and I both had duffels and we couldn't fit them in the in the compartment and we had to put them leave them down at the end of the train like down sorry down at the end of the compartment like by a um by the toilet not cool and you know also like zero security okay another lesson learned the oxygen doesn't really work you know so they have this much vaunted system of when you're on this train after you get over a certain altitude the oxygen is supposed to kick in it is not pressurized it's not like a flight in that way but they are supposed to pump oxygen into the compartments and there's a place for them to do that uh, it's this little emergency oxygen outlet 
and you see here there is uh, zero oxygen coming out of there so there's no extra oxygen getting in here so don't count on there being oxygen on the train and we're high um, and I've been in um, I was in Xining for four nights so which is like 7400 feet so I'm better well, much better acclimated than most would be and and I'm, I'm also taking diamox so I strongly recommend that you don't think that you assume that the train is really not going to do anything for you in terms of acclimatization we have a whole post about this but the train basically goes up and down up and down and in order for a climate for um a journey to acclimate you to a high altitude you need to take steps and to be sleeping at kind of intermediate steps as you go and that does not happen on the train you start at um, 7400 and then it goes not very up high i think until goldman is maybe nine or i may be wrong about this but maybe nine or something for quite a few hours and then you just like jet up to these passes and down and it, it's just not um, a way to acclimatize and there's no oxygen in here. So you just assume it is slightly better to take this train than it is to fly into Lhasa. And the main advantage, I think, of taking this train, I've said this so many times, but the main advantage of taking this train is that you take it from Xining. You're at 7,400. Like for me, I stayed there four nights, so I'm getting a lot of acclimatization. That's a major, major thing. So it's not the train. And then you get a little bit when you're on the train as well. So that's, it's, you know, it's a nice way to acclimatize mainly because you're going to sleep in Xining or Siling. That's the thing. Okay, I'm going to stop and make a part two in a minute. Hi there, it's Yolanda again with Yolanda Experience Tibet, and this is part two of a lessons learned about the Tibet train. And one of them is the bathrooms are pretty nasty. They have, in theory, um, a Western, each car, I think has a Western one and, and then a squat toilet, but very early on the journey, there's hardly anybody on this train. It's already very, very nasty. So I would recommend you get a pair of some kind of shoes. Like you don't want to bring your regular shoes, I'm thinking. Well, actually, I bring my hiking shoes in there. And then in the compartment, I brought some, the, the little free shoes that you get from a, from a hotel, from Chinese hotels. So I got some of those to just sit in there, in here, because you just feel kind of nasty after you've been in that bathroom. I'm just telling you straight up. Another one is the tickets uh, for these trains go on sale. They, they, the time can change, but right now the tickets go on sale 30 days in advance. Um, and even now, uh, when there's hardly anybody on this train, uh, when I first got on, the seats were full, and the, I, we have an excellent travel agent, um, which I'll give you a link if you want a, ref a free referral to use the very same travel agents that we use. Um, I am very happy to do so. And the reason I say that is like you need a very good agent uh, working for you on your behalf to get the trains tickets. It's very tricky. So when we applied a month ahead, there were actually no seats on the first day that the trains, that the seats were available, that the tickets went on sale. And then a few days later, something, this one came available, which is very weird. So it was just that the, they were full um, for this soft sleeper, I guess to Goldman, and I, I don't know how it worked. But anyway, you really want a very good agent working on your behalf. You can get the train se seats yourself, tickets yourself, unless you're very, very good. I don't. I wouldn't recommend doing that. And there is a fee uh, for the agents um, because they, you know, they gotta get somebody to get it. They, you know, they basically gotta get an expert to help them. Be sure that you you must have at least 30 days if you're gonna take the train. And then uh, also I recommend getting a very good agent for that. Um, you will also need your permit. You're going to need your special Tibet permit, which of course is different than your visa for China. So you, you have to have a visa for China, which is something you get yourself. And then there's a permit that only your agent, an official Tibetan agent can get for you. Um, and you'll need that to get on the train. So you need that to get into the train station. You'll need that to, and when you're on the train, they've already checked it twice or something, and you'll 100% need it when you get to Lhasa. Uh-huh. And that's it for 
um, my lessons learned for the train. If I if I get any more lessons on this, I will uh, get back, and I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy the scenery. Ciao. Hey there, Yolanda back with one more lesson learned, or actually two more lessons learned, and that is uh, on the Tibet train. One of them is that there's only seems to be one electrical outlet in this compartment. Last time I remember, the Chinese people that we were in the compartment with brought some kind of um, multi-plug brick, so that worked out great. But, um, and I'm okay because I'm the only person in this compartment right now. But if you had a lot of people and competing for that one outlet, you um, you might want to bring. I, I had actually brought like a extra brick just in case, um, so you might want to think about that. And the other one is it's pretty tough to to get your bag if the train is full, or if even if there were just other people there. So I brought just a couple of bags with the things that I needed on the train. And it's super convenient, you know, just like some toilet paper, bring toilet paper, huge lessons learned. There is no toilet paper, you must bring toilet paper and the kind of hand sanitizer stuff, your random little food or whatever. So it's just kind of nice, like before you get on the train, like just, uh, I recommend getting all that in some little bag that you can access really easily just in case you cannot get your bag, which probably most of you wouldn't be able to do. Okay, that's it for my lessons learned. Uh, under this, this video and under all these videos, we'll have a link for a um, for us if you'd like a free introduction to the same Tibetan, excellent Tibetan owned agencies that we use. Um, we'll happy, we'll, we're happy to provide that for you. Um, and uh, yeah, have a good one, ciao.